let's talk about life. Or rather, let's talk about what I think that bothers us in life. Aging and money. Wait, I'm talking for 10 seconds and you already feel uncomfortable? What is it that makes you uncomfortable? Me talking about aging or about money? Apparently, both. For many of us, money became the ultimate insurance against the threats of aging. In the 21st century, being old is a curse. There are no more wise elderlies, just old people. And becoming old scares us, well, to death. Who wants to grow old? I see nobody raises a hand. Well, the true nobody wants to be old. But hey, you forget, the alternative to becoming old is not to remain young. It is to die young. Not such an appealing alternative, is it? But if to be old, then at least to be a rich one and not to dwell in the bins, right? This is certainly a frightening future. So how to avoid such a misfortune? A recent study shows that the contemporary 40 years old person trusts his children to care for him in old age 50% less than his own parents trusted him. Men, by the way, trust their children much less than women. Eh, I wonder why. Lack of money worries women and men quite the same. But it turns out that the average woman trust her network more to help her in case of need. Not only her children, but also her siblings and her friends. Women are more trusting and more trusted. Studies show that women are also indeed more successful in being supported by their network and they support their own network. It seems that young lone wolves become shaggy wolves in their old age. So who should we trust? If not our kids, we can trust the government. This one we know for sure. So we end up like an ant alone in the task of saving for the cold winter. The problem is that although a person's chance of reaching the age of 70 have increased about a hundred times since the ancient era, the human perception of long-term planning has not progressed at the same pace. If I ask you here, how much would $1,000 be worth in 10 years if the annual interest is 10%, 80% of you will provide more or less the correct answer. But if I ask you how much will those $1,000 be worth at the end of 30 years, less than 20% will be able to handle this task. The rest of you will just get completely lost. Almost half will avoid the question whatsoever. Our brain just wasn't built for this long-term estimate. If a tiger or a hunter from the neighboring tribe lurks behind every tree, why shouldn't one need to know how to calculate Compound interest. But there is no choice in the 21st century. Just as we are forced to convince our own selves that not every donut is really needed to survive the tundra, the 21st century ape must understand that when it comes to a long-term finance decision, it is not enough to contemplate. He should compel himself to calculate. Thank you.